What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. Talking about a few different horror topics in this video here today. We'll be talking about Scream 7. We'll be talking about Chucky Season 3. We'll be talking about Saw X. And we'll be talking about Maxine. Just a little description of what Maxine reminds me of and what many of you might enjoy if you are a fan of this movie. So just to jump into Scream 7, Christopher Landon, who we know is directing Scream 7, replacing Radio Silence, recently talked about how he got the opportunity to direct the upcoming 7th entry during a recent sit down with Sirius XM. He said, it came out of the blue for me. My understanding is that there were conversations happening for some time, but I think it was just an opportunity that really arose because the other directors who did the last two films, Tyler and Matt, they wanted to do something else. They were ready to kind of do something different. That's when they obviously had to find someone new. And I've known Kevin Williamson, who wrote the original film for a long, long time, and he's a friend. And you know, I think he threw my name into the hat and everybody kind of said, yeah, that makes sense. That seems to make sense. And I was just thrilled that I got the call because it felt very, um, it felt like kids it, it felt like kismet it felt like a thing that like was always meant to be he's more or less echoing what i was saying in my video that dropped the week all of that news got confirmed about christopher landon in radio silence so radio silence had other interests they wanted to explore things before doing scream again their contributions to this franchise will always be appreciated despite many people of course i know who don't appreciate it that's fine you can not appreciate it i will many others will uh but the show must go on williamson's stamp of approval if williamson really did have a hand in land and being considered does give me hope that this will be an amazing movie it does not mean it will be an amazing movie because i know a lot of you think that kevin williamson has signed off on these past two movies and i know a lot of you think the past two movies were terrible i i don't think that but i know a lot of you do not care for williamson's stamp of approval because you disagree with his take on the last two movies because you think they're terrible so that's my point that you could end up watching scream 7 and find it to be terrible i personally think that it'll be, end up being amazing however diving into chucky season Three. Chucky season three has a state of the season allegedly airing on October 2nd, according to Rotten Tomatoes, which has seemingly confirmed those episode titles that we were discussing earlier this year. We have episode one, Murder at 600. We have episode two, Let the Right One In. Episode three, Jennifer's Body. Episode four, Halloween three. And then there's an episode titled State of the Season, which is airing on october 2nd before the series debuts on october 4th or before the season debuts i should say i can only guess this episode is going to either set expectations for season three and maybe it's a recap of the last two seasons to, sh to set expectations for season three or it's an update on their plans for season three post strikes since they didn't get to finish everything due to the ongoing strikes the episode could actually just confirm the four episodes that we have coming our way while also shedding light on if season three will get to finish or not to be honest, I'm just, I just give us a long season four at this point. You know, if you're going to have to go back and finish shooting the second half of season four or season three, I just take that and tap it on or tack it on to season four, whatever you want to do with season four. Of course, there can be a time jump if there needs to be. But what do you guys think the state of the season episode will include if it's even legit? Because it could be BS. But Rotten Tomatoes, according according to Rotten Tomatoes in this episode list, there will be a state of the episode or state of the season episode that airs on October 2nd, two days before the season debuts on October 4th. Now, I would say this, though, I want to speculate really quick on the Jennifer's Body episode title as an episode title that does has me thinking that Nika will either possess Tiffany this episode or there's always a chance that Tiffany herself could legitimately die and will quite literally have Jennifer Tilly's body on our screen since we know she plays this lovable evil queen of ours. Diving into Saw X. Saw X comments from Kevin Grudert, who we know is directing, are just getting everyone, including me, more excited for this upcoming entry. Saw Space tweeted out a series of recent comments from the director who also addressed the series future and kept discussing surprises that we could see in the upcoming movie. Now, some of these might not be in order. Uh, it's from a recent edition of SFX magazine, I believe. I'm just going over the tweets from Saw Space here. Um, he said, we've learned one way or another that John Kramer is what it's all about. 
This was an opportunity to really focus on him and his story and a really key incident that happens in his life. So it led us to a story that is surprisingly pretty emotional compared to the other Saw movies. Not that there isn't emotion in the others, but it's mostly the emotion of fear. There's other stuff in this one. There's hope and there's hope destroyed. I truly believe this is the most standalone since the first movie. It's not about knowing or remembering anything about the others. It's a richer experience if you know Saul because otherwise you won't necessarily know who Amanda is when she appears. There's no obvious new direction to go after this film, talking about the future of the series right here. There's no obvious new direction to go after this film, but I think there's probably or there probably will be more Saw movies, particularly if this one's successful. Oh, well, of course, that's how the business works, of course. We all know that. In Saw X, there are surprises to come. It builds more on what's in the past than planting seeds for the future. There are extended sequences that are not the normal kind of thing you see in a Saw movie. Really, it's more of an emotional driven epic than anything else. So you see, when you're talking like that, that gets folks like me and many others with these type of comments that gets us intrigued, it gets us on the edge of our seat. And I know there's a section of Saw fans out there who have been clamoring for the series to kind of shed this this uh reputation has gotten unfortunately over the years for being torture porn and it sounds like we have a chance here to have those people who write these movies off as torture porn to look at this one and say ah i see they found their footing again you could argue that they started to lean into that a little bit more in the subsequent sequels and just kind of being more so concerned with what type of twist are we going to throw in now because that's that's the shtick with saw but if we're going to see a side of tobin bell's character of john kramer in a way that we haven't really gotten to see since those earlier movies then again that's where you have that opportunity for us to get something very emotional something that might pull at our heartstrings because we know john's whole dilemma is that he is sick these people are are doing him dirty and he's going to get revenge against them similar to how there was a lot of people involved in that first movie who were doing a lot of dirty things john was involved with those people and he went after them so if you can give me an emotional driven story that can just make the villain very layered that's something that can easily subtract those oh it's just torture porn comments leaning on that emotional side of it that character development can really do a lot especially with how john's situation is relatable to a lot of people who go through something as unfortunate as cancer not that they would be mindless and <laughs> maniacal killers in the process of it all but you get what i mean last thing we're going to talk about here is maxine so maxine we know will be the conclusion to ty west's x trilogy that began last year with x and pearl so this film, like I said at the beginning of the video, I want to tell you guys which movie you are going to kind of come out of Maxine thinking that reminded me of insert movie title. The movie Maxine on paper already reminds me a lot of is Scream 3. In a lot of ways, there's a lot of DNA that is Scream 3, Scream 3-esque, if you will. You're not going for any one of you who are already jump into conclusions. You're not going to get any Roman Bridgers. You are not getting that. So go ahead and stop thinking that because you're not. It's not happening. You're not getting any half siblings. You're not getting none of that. So what I mean is, it's just the the things you have present in Scream Three. When you watch Maxine, you're going to come out of Maxine saying hey that was like scream 3 i don't want to say in what ways it is like scream 3 i don't mind telling you how it's not like scream 3 so you guys can still be surprised by the killer because you're not going to have any roman bridger type of things but the stuff that i've heard about this film as i recap my notes i'm thinking to myself whoa this is like scream 3 but to me already on paper it just seems like it'll be a better movie because i can admittedly say while i love as many of you probably know if you follow my twitter i love sydney's arc in scream 3 so much that's why it's considered my favorite to me anyway however there are other contributing components of that movie besides just sydney's arc that i think are severely lacking compared to the others so therefore i do not consider that movie to be the best i think it's still the weakest sydney's arc doesn't save everything it just makes it something i cannot completely write off 
especially with some of the other things that it has going for it, but it's still the weakest. But Maxine, when you guys watch Maxine, there's a lot of stuff in Maxine that's going to make you go, oh, that's Scream 3. And I hope those of you who don't like Scream 3, because I'm not someone who doesn't like Scream 3, I can just I just have no problem admitting it's the weakest. Those of you who don't like Scream 3, hopefully you'll see the DNA and you'll be able to say, well, I love Maxine because I, I still believe Maxine is going to be the most amazing one out of the three. I, I, I just refuse to believe otherwise until I start seeing footage that'll contradict these notes. But you guys can let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notification and there's a video in the description. I'll have links to my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know any movies, news, or reviews I'm going to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.